everyone, it's Heather back with another video. I know it's been a little while, but I've been busy with the end of school and taking board exams and um, orientation and licensing and all sorts of stuff. So just thought I would do a video about some of those things and to let you know what I plan for the future um, for the channel. And you can let me know what you think in comments if you are interested in any of the stuff I was thinking of doing. So anyway, so first off, graduation. I have now officially graduated. Sorry, the screen's shaking. My dog is scratching himself next to me. You done? Okay. Um, graduation happened about a month ago, almost a month ago. And it was very nice. We did get to have an in-person graduation. It was hot and sunny and outside, but um, it was a it was a really good day and was happy that we were able to do an in-person graduation. Um, I decided to attend that one. I don't plan on attending one when I get my bachelor's degree just because I'm going to be doing that um, online in a different state and so not not going to be going to my bachelor's degree graduation. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go to this one. Not everyone did, um, but I was glad that I went. It was a really nice day. Um, so after graduation, the day after graduation, I actually went out to the beach for a few days but not just to hang out and have fun because I'm honestly not a beach person. Um, I went to a symposium that was hosted by my state respiratory society. Um, and it was a three day long event, um, had sessions on various equipment on different, uh, diseases. There was a, um, like a, Jeopardy kind of competition between some student groups and all in all it was a really great time and I did get to hang out with some friends and and do some fun stuff as well. I wasn't just all going to symposium stuff uh, but I highly recommend that. I do hope that at some point I can go to the AARC's national one. Um, I think this next one is going to be in Phoenix. I'm not entirely sure. I need to look it up but I don't think I'm going to go to the one this year only because trying to take time off from work and travel for something like that my first year of work is probably not going to happen. But you never know. Um, so I was at the symposium for a few days. I came home. I gave myself one day to do some studying. And then the next day, so like four or five days after graduation, I took my um, multiple choice exam, my therapist multiple choice exam. And that's the one where... Um, you pass it a certain score, you get your CRT. If you pass it the higher score, you get your CRT and you can take the ClinSim exam to try and get your RRT. So I did pass it the higher score. Um, there were one, two, three, four, four or five of us from my cohort taking the test at the same location that day. It was about an hour from where I live a little more than an hour, maybe. Um, but that was the closest location that I could get to within a reasonable amount of time. There was nothing in my particular area anytime soon. So I went ahead and drove to a different city for to do that test. And um, everyone who tested with me that day also passed at the high score as far as I know. So congratulations to all of them. I've been getting news from my cohort, from various people, um, people who are passing their their TMC and, you know, applying for licensing and all of that. So really exciting time for everyone in my cohort. Um, so I took the TMC and I had planned on taking a week or two off to study for the ClinSims. And after like a day, I decided that I wasn't going to do that. I just wanted to go ahead and take it and get it done. I had been doing prep for both exams since the fall semester before I graduated and I felt like I was probably as prepared I was as I was going to be. So I took um, on a Friday that so I took my my TMC exam on Wednesday, I think Thursday on Thursday. And then on Friday night, I went ahead and paid for and scheduled my ClinSim exam. And that one I had to drive a little bit further away for but if I had waited to do it closer. I would have had to wait another week and I didn't really want to do that. So um, Friday nights I signed up for that and spent the weekend kind of studying and just going over stuff. I 
I went over my stuff from my Kettering seminar that we did as part of the program that I was in. I took a practice exam through the Kettering website, a practicing ClinSim, and then because I had purchased some tokens, uh, we were able to purchase tokens on sale as part of our seminar. I had purchased some when we did our seminar, so I used most of those um, to buy individual simulations in the areas where I had been weakest when I took the full exam um, that they offered. And so I spent the weekend studying those and going over that, you know, other simulations that I had access to through um, my Persing book, the Respiratory Care Exam Review book that has an online portion with it, and um, the NBRC practice tests um, that are available and the ones that I had already taken reviewing those. Um, and then I took my ClinSim exam that Monday, so like a little, like a week after graduation, I took my ClinSims and I did pass those as well. So I am now a registered respiratory therapist. Yay! And um, since then, I have applied for my licensing with the state that I live in, and that has not been a smooth process for me. For other people in my cohort who applied, it has been. They got their license very quickly. Uh, supposedly, everything was being expedited this year because of COVID and because of the desperate need to get more therapists in the jobs. Um, so for most of the people, it has been expedited. Uh, mine has not. There have been issues with they supposedly requested paperwork from me. I never got the request for paperwork. Um, I sent the paperwork and now I'm, I feel like I'm being stalled. The person who um, is handling all of my paperwork at the medical board, I feel has taken offense to my multiple calls and emails and things like that. Um, so that's been frustrating because there's nothing that I can do about it. All I can do is send in the stuff that's being requested and then I'm just sitting here waiting while other people who applied after I did um, already got their license. So anyway, that's just something where you just have to be patient and wait and just, you know, um, nothing to be done about it. You know, it's just one of those things in life that's frustrating and, um, and sucks that you can't demand that things be done right now, but that's just how it goes sometimes. So anyway, so licensing is the last step before I can actually work full time as a respiratory therapist. Um, I will be doing orienting at my job. Um, I've done some that does not involve patient care, um, just department oriented stuff um, without patient care because I'm not licensed yet. Um, and I think that that's going to go well. Um, I definitely don't feel like I know everything because I don't. I definitely don't feel like I am ready to go out and do things completely on my own because I'm not. I mean, I could go give NEB treatments and inhalers and things like that, but sh certainly still need some more orienting and more hands-on time with um, ICU stuff and absolutely with NICU stuff. So I am going, I am starting as a NICU therapist, which at my hospital does not mean that you only do NICU. We do NICU and adults, but it means that you have either the NICU or the PICU, and then you also get some floor work on the adult side. So um, I think it's a good mix. I really like it. I know some people that's not what they want. They want to do just NICU. They want to do, you know, just NICU, PICU. They don't want to do adult stuff. And then there's other people who only want to do adults. They don't want to do kids and babies. Um, and that's just a personal preference. Everyone's going to be different what they like. Um, I really am looking forward to doing more work in the NICU and PICU I'm a little iffier on. I actually, it's funny because some people would rather do PICU than NICU, um, but for me personally, I, I find it easier to work with the little bitty babies than with, you know, older babies and toddlers and kids who are resistant and, you know, they're going to try to not get a neb or they don't want to follow directions or they can't follow directions or 
So frankly, I think the little bitty babies are actually easier. Um, it's a little scary because they are so small and, and you do have to be careful with them as far as like, you know, when you're doing taping, their skin can, is very, very thin and sensitive and you have to be really careful with things. And they're just so small, it's hard to do some things. Um, but I'm really, really looking forward to it. And I have already gotten my neonatal resuscitation class under my belt. And the next thing I will be doing, and I held back some of my Kettering tokens that I had purchased because I do plan on taking my, um, what's the certification? My neonatal pediatric certification through NBRC. Um, that's going to be the next thing I do. And then my plan is to start a bachelor's program at the University of Michigan in January. Um, and that will be a bachelor's of respiratory with probably a health admin minor. It could be public health minor, but I think it's going to be health admin. Um, so that's what I've been up to for the last month. And it's been really nice not to have school stuff. Sometimes I don't really know what to do with myself because I don't have anything to study right now. But I'm still, I am still studying in that I'm still learning the NICU side of things. And I'm, you know, looking up YouTube videos on, on various um, pieces of equipment that I'm not as familiar with and procedures that I'm not as familiar with just to get more of that in my brain before I really have to start doing stuff on my own. Um, so that's what I've been doing. Um, my plans for the future. If people are interested in this channel, I can certainly um, continue to do some videos on some um, things about school. So kind of looking back at what school, uh, what things were more difficult and what I felt was helpful. So my plan is to do some videos like that. And then if people are interested, um, some videos on some of the subjects that people seem to find the most challenging with school, um, you know, mechanical ventilation and uh, ABG interpretation. I know a lot of people, that's kind of one of those concepts that's sometimes a little bit difficult. Um, and, you know, you never know what particular explanation is going to help things click in your head. Um, that's why when precepting, go with different people if you can, um, if you get the opportunity to schedule your own precepting with people, find people to go with that are different than your normal clinical instructor or your regular preceptor, because everyone's going to do things a little bit differently. You're going to explain things a little bit differently. And you might find that, you know, when this person explains it, you don't get it at all. But when this person, you know, gives a slightly different explanation, all of a sudden you really understand what they're saying. So take advantage of, of your, clinical time to really try and get as much exposure to different ways of doing things and different explanations of things as you can. So that's what I'm kind of looking at doing in the future. If that's something that would interest you, let me know. And I hope you all are doing well for people who just graduated and who are embarking on taking their boards or have just passed their boards. Congratulations. And if you haven't taken your boards yet, study. You can do it. I, I know it is nerve wracking. I was certainly super nervous, especially when going to take the clin sims. Um, but just do your prep and take your time and believe in yourself and, and trust in your, your instincts. So hope y'all are doing well and I will see you next time.